My name is Jennifer Kennedy. I'm an HR generalist here at Madison Health and I work in the HR department. Today I would like to talk to you about the dress code here at Madison Health. Our clinical areas are required to wear scrubs and for most of our clinical departments we follow a colors of care. This colors of care, the colors of scrubs you are assigned to wear are determined, are determined on what your job responsibilities are. For example, our housekeepers wear black scrub bottoms and a red scrub top. Our nurses wear dark gray. Our um, health unit coordinators and unit secretaries, psych techs all wear seal blue scrubs. And then our providers as well as our house supervisors wear a black, black color scrubs. These scrubs are your responsibility to purchase. We are not picky about the style. We just ask that you follow the colors of care when selecting the scrubs to wear to work. Also, we ask when you come to work that your scrubs look neat and clean and you present a professional, um, professional appearance. Also, as you come to work, you may see that some people's jackets have, or scrubs have Madison Health embroidered on them. We are happy to embroider Madison Health and the logo on your scrubs if you're interested in that. We will embroider three per year if you're full-time. Regular part-time is two per year and part-time or PRN are one per year. If you're interested in doing that, you would drop off one scrub top to HR. We will send that out to get embroidered and then um, you will be called when it's done and you can come pick it up. So um, again, you can have the Madison logo that is optional, but you can have it embroidered on your scrubs if you would like to do that. Um, we tell you what color of scrubs to wear, but we are not um, real picky about the type of shoes you wear. We ask if you're in a clinical area that they be close-toed shoes. Um, you will be walking a lot for your positions, most of you, and so we ask that you pick comfortable shoes that you can walk um, many steps during your shift because most of you will get a lot of walking in. Um, if you work in the kitchen, your dress code is dark pants or jeans, and they will provide you with shirts to wear for your shift. Our engineering department wears dark pants and then a shirt of your choice. Just keep in mind, as you're, if you are working in engineering, you'll be pulling cables possibly, working with paint and stuff, and so um, something that looks professional, but is easily, the care, to take care of it is pretty easy. Um, and then if you're in a biz, if you are in an office setting, a non-clinical setting, the dress is business casual. So we ask that you wear slacks and a blouse, sweaters are acceptable, um, skirts, dresses. You can also um, wear shirts with collars. Um, you're also welcome to wear Madison Health logoed um, clothing, especially shirts, especially on our casual Fridays or jean Fridays. Um, your, your shoes do not have to be closed toed they, they can be open toed but again, as you come to work, we just ask that you remember um, the Madison Health values and mission and vision and that you um, keep that in mind as you choose clothing to come to work in. Madison Health has casual Fridays here for our non-clinical staff. On casual Fridays, employees are encouraged and allowed to wear jeans. We ask these jeans be in good repair, no rips or tears. Um, they need to look professional. And then we ask, even though it's a, we call it Jean Friday, we ask that the, your top look professional. You, you're welcome to wear Madison logoed shirts, polo shirts, sweaters, um, collared, collared shirts, but just make sure that you're, that you're presenting a um, professional appearance when you come to work on casual Fridays. Not every Friday here is casual Friday, Jean Friday. But sometimes we, we like to wear jeans around here, and so sometimes we will celebrate certain things. Right, this week we happen to be celebrating Jean Week, or su spring in summer, bringing in spring this week, so our employees are encouraged to wear jeans during the week. So um, watch your email for that. Sometimes we throw in some fun dates to wear jeans as well, so not just on Fridays. But whenever we have a Jean Friday or a Jean Week, we ask that you please remember to be professional, no hoodies and professional um, shirts with your jeans. Um, our non-clinical areas, your shoes can be open-toed and um, I think that's about, about it for the dress code. Again, we ask everyone to remain professional in your appearance. Our 
Policy talks about tattoos and if they are small or not, if they are small and non-distracting, you're welcome to, to wear that, but if they're bigger or distracting and um, interrupt our patient care here at Madison Health, they may, your department may ask you to wear a jacket or something to cover up your tattoos while you're working your shift here. Um, as far as jewelry, especially if you're in a clinical area, we ask that your jewelry be something that isn't big, long, dangly, something that patients can grab onto and yank and, and cause damage to yourself or hurt you by pulling your jewelry off. Um, and so small jewelry, um, keep in mind a lot of you will be working in clinical areas, some of you will be working in clinical areas, and so nothing where that's big and stands up where bacteria can get, get into. Um, one thing we ask too is if and when you're wearing jewelry to work is not to wear anything sentimental when you come to work. Um, we just don't want anything that means a lot to you to get lost here at Madison Health. And so um, don't wear things that are sentimental or that you might be sad if it gets lost or stolen here. So um, we, the big thing about, I'm not it. the big thing about, the biggest thing here at Madison Health are all of our employees wear name badges. The dress code for our name badges are that the badges need to be worn above the waist. And so when you come to work, we ask you to please clip on that badge above the waist. The biggest reason is people will be walking through the hospital and you're easily identified as someone that may be able to help them simply by um, patients or patient families recognizing you, you as someone that may be able to help them by wearing a badge. The badges are given through HR. HR makes those badges and gives them out the first day of orientation. If you lose your badge, if it's lost or stolen, or you have scraped your, the ice on your windows with that badge, we will charge you $10 for a replacement badge. And so you're welcome to come to HR. Our office hours are eight to five, but usually someone's here early, as early as seven, and sometimes someone is here even a little later than five. So feel free to contact us. We're happy to get a badge. We're happy to bring a badge to your department. Um, I'm happy to bring a badge to your department so that you can have a badge for your, during your shift. If you do not have a badge, someone has to open the doors and help you throughout your whole shift. And so it's easier if you can just contact HR and we can make you a badge, um, make you a badge for your shift. Those badges, the badge, your, HR, your employee badge will help cluck you in. It will get you in certain doors. And, it, and you can also pay for things here at Madison Health. And so when you forget your badge, it, if, if at all possible, if you can run home and grab your badge without being late for your shift or without, um, without having someone have to wait for you to come in and relieve them from shift, if you live close enough, we ask that you can run home and get it. Or like I said, someone here is here at HR, we're here happy to help you um, get a badge printed off and get to you and work, we work really hard at getting you access that you need really fast so that it doesn't delay you in delivering patient care for long. Um, if your badge, for example, I'm gonna use nurses that graduate. Nurses that graduate have graduate nurse on their badges be, and this is because they have not taken the NCLEX and are not, are not um, registered nurses at this point. And so nurses, a lot of times their badges at first say graduate nurse. So during your time of orienting, if you get a job change or title change, or if you're a nurse that passes the NCLEX, stop by HR, let us know that you have, have had a title change or you have passed the NCLEX and we're happy to reprint you a badge um, free of charge to advertise your success in passing the NCLEX or um, getting a new position here at Madison Health. So just to recap, um, badges that are damaged or lost will cost you $10. Um, and then if you get a position change or, or um, additional certification or, or pass the NCLEX, we're happy to print you a badge at our, at our cost. Um, the biggest thing that I need to talk to you here at Madison Health is about, for women especially, the nail length. Especially in clinical areas, they say the nail should not be passed. The beds of your fingers, no overlay, especially in our um, sterile environments. Um, you can have gel polish, you can have um, fingernail polish, not, in, not in, in most areas except the sterile areas. But should that gel or nail polish become chipped, they will ask you to take it off. But our sterile um, departments, they ask no, no nail polish, no overlays, um, 
and, and that's simply for the safety of our patients. I know this is a lot of information to cover as far as the dress code is concerned, and so if you have any questions about the dress code, please refer to the dress code policy found in our policies and procedures manual. Today I would like to talk to you about our drug screen policy here at Madison Health. First of all, all of you had to pass a drug screen in order to be attending orientation, so congratulations, great job, you've made it this far. Um, but I want to talk to you about other situations where you will be required to um, adhere, possibly adhere to a drug screen and the process that we go through so you can understand the process a little bit better. First of all, so we do drug screens for several different reasons. First of all, first of all we do it upon hire. Second of all, randomly, every month we pick a certain number of employees based on how many current employees we have. We do a random selection, and it is strictly random. You may work here 10 years and never get drawn, or you may work here a month and be drawn the very next month. So it is a random process. We draw um, randomly, and then um, if your name is drawn, we make a little packet. We deliver it to your manager or director. And when you come on to shift again, they will deliver that packet to you. That packet, up at the top of the packet, it's in a manila folder. Up on the top of the packet, it has a time stamp or a place for them to write the time in. So your manager or director will write in the time that they give you that, that envelope, and then you will have 20 minutes to leave and get down to um, our admitting department and check in and admitting for your drug screen. So much like you did for um, your pre-employment drug screen, you'll just come down to admitting, um, go through the admitting process, and then um, have your drug screen. If you work in, a, in the Rigby office, this, it's a little different. You can't make it up here in 20 minutes. So our latest is that you will be taking your drug screen just down there in Rigby, and, and then they will transport, um, transport it up here to Madison Health. So all of our other site clinics, will we are asking to come in here to Madison Health and do the drug screen. So you have 20 minutes from the time your um, manager or director writes the time on there um, to check in to our admitting department. Next is um, if there's reason for, for someone to think that you may, um, <laughs> that you may be high or be coming, um, coming to work under the influence of drugs or alcohol, they can ask you to be drug screened. Most of the time this is managers or directors are employee to employee doesn't that's not something our employees to employees do but if you have a concern about someone in your department that you may feel there's reason to think that they are using drugs or alcohol please report that to your manager or director and let them work through the process about that but our managers or directors can ask employees um, to submit a drug screen if they think they are coming to work under the influence of drugs or alcohol again the same process you'll go to admitting and and then um, just have your drug screen taken then um, if you're involved in an accident during company time, you may be asked to adhere to a drug screen. So, so um, if you're involved in an accident where you get hurt, they can drug screen you to make sure that drugs or alcohol were not related to the accident that happened. And then very last, if medication comes up missing in a patient room, you may be asked to adhere to a drug screen. So for example, if a patient was supposed to get 30 pills and they get 27, um, Madison Health will drug screen anybody who has had access to that room during the time that the medication came up missing. It can be radiology, it can be respiratory, it can be nurses, physicians, housekeeping aides, just anybody who, would, who may have been in and out of that room um, that, that may have had access to that medication can be asked to adhere to a drug screen. So those are the reasons that we drug screen here at Madison Health. I'm always, I should not, I should, I'm never surprised at some of the questions that come up, but I've been asked about marijuana quite a bit. Marijuana is legal in the states around Idaho, but it is not legal here in Idaho. So I have been asked if I go home to Oregon and um, do marijuana where it's legal and then come back and I'm randomly drug screened, what happens then? We follow the same process as a, as a positive drug screen, should your drug screen come back positive. Does the positive drug screen mean that you will lose your job? My job is to let you know the worst case scenario. So worst case scenario is you could lose your job and that is, is a reality of a positive drug screen here at Madison Health. Um, there are other options that they will look at um, for positive drug screens, but just understand that positive drug screen worst case scenario could be the loss of your job. Um, 
And so if, if you do marijuana where it's legal, it's not legal here in Idaho. And so we ask you just not to participate in that. Um, also, so a few things that I have seen positive drug screens cause a little problem for employees are, first of all, make sure it's a current prescription that you're taking. Sometimes um, the, panel of, the panel of drug screen that we run here at Madison Health, a lot of times in a class of about 15 to 17 employees, I may have three or four that will flag positive for a drug screen. And that's simply because of the medication they're taking. And so that's usually quickly resolved. And, and, uh, and so um, medication is, is a big factor in positive drug screens. Um, so the first thing I'm asking or I'm letting you know about is make sure it's a current prescription. One of the drugs that we see a lot of is ADHD medicine or anti-anxiety medication. Both of these can flag positive on a drug screen. And so sometimes school students here will come here to school. They need help focusing. They'll get on an ADHD medicine, take it for the semester that they're here, and then they'll move home for the summer and a semester. And then when they come back, they have a half-empty half bottle of pills that they remember why they got the prescription for it and start taking it again. By then, the prescription has usually expired. And so if it's a prescription that you feel like you need, please make sure that it's a current prescription and that you get a current prescription for for whatever you're taking, um, because an expired prescription can cause problems in, in your drug screen process. Second of all, I know it's crazy, but please make sure it is your prescription and not a prescription that someone's like, here, take Zoxycodone, make you feel better. So make sure it's your prescription, not someone else's prescription, even though that someone else may be taking a prescription that is similar, um, the exact same prescription you're taking, make sure it is your prescription and not someone else's. So just two things to warn you about as, as um, I've seen come back on drug screens that have caused some problems is um, current prescription and it needs to be your prescription. So the drug screen process, all of you have seen your side, the employee side of the drug screen process. So let me talk to you a little bit about what happens behind the scenes of the drug screen. So as soon as you submit your sample for your drug screen, they run the drug screen here at Madison Health. If it comes back negative, I receive um, the results. Usually within the day or within the next business day, I am told of the negative results. If it is positive, if your drug screen flags positive, we send it out immediately to a third party. Our third par party happens to be in Boise and they're called Minert, M-I-N-E-R-T. They will run it again. If it comes back positive, they will reach out to you and try to figure out why your drug screen is is positive. Mostly what they're looking for most of the time is phone numbers um, or where you're filling your prescription at because they need to call and talk to the pharmacy and make sure that you have a current prescription for whatever is flagging on your drug screen. I know and I'm guilty as well of living in an era if we don't know who's calling us on our cell phone we hit decline and so I need to just ask you, I'm asking you if you have had a recent drug screen and you notice a, a known caller, caller, please pick up the phone, please answer it. It is probably our third party, um, and it doesn't come across as minor. As I've talked to past employees here at Madison Health, it doesn't come across as minor. Um, that's a, one reason why a lot of people decline the call as well. They're not sure who is calling, but I'm asking you to please pick up the call. It, chances are it could be our third party, just wanting clearance of where you're filling your prescription so they can get your drug screen cleared. Minor is a busy company, they don't have um, several days to try to get a hold of you. They will call you a time or two, maybe three times at the most. And then if they can't get a hold of you, they send me back uh, the results that will say positive and it will say no contact. That means that your drug screen is positive. It means that um, not necessarily for any reason other than it was positive for a certain drug or, or um, something on the panel that they weren't able to get resolved. And so then I have to track you down and chase you down and try to figure out and have you call Minert yourself. And so it's easier if you could please just contact Minert and, um, and get that resolved right off instead of us having to spend time trying to find you and, and, um, and that. So we want to continue the patient care. We want to continue with you on the schedule. And so if you can just please answer the phone and, and get, um, let Minert know where you fill your prescriptions, that would be great. 
So in a class when I have three or four come back positive, 99% of the time um, those drug screens are resolved. There have only been a few instances that um, there really is a reason that it is a positive drug screen that can't be explained by, a, by medication. Positive drug screen um, that is not resolved through medication, if, you're, if you really do test positive because of marijuana or other drugs in your system, um, what happens then is I will meet with your manager or director, we will meet with you during your shift, and you will be sent home. Our policy states that you cannot work um, at Madison Health while you're under the influence of drugs or alcohol, and so you will be sent home. The process from this is that you will be taken off the schedule, and you are given one week to submit a new drug screen. These drugs, so whenever you feel ready within that week, you would come back, you would contact myself, um, for I will have paperwork waiting for you, so you'll come up to HR and pick up the paperwork that's required. You'll come back down here to admitting and admit and be admitted for that drug screen. The difference is um, this time you will pay for the drug screen, um, and I believe it's about thirty-five or forty-five dollars out of pocket. So, upon doing that drug screen, you will have to pay the admitting booth the um, the cost of the drug screen. Um, before you have the drug screen done. So um, anyway, you'll have the drug screen done. If it does come back negative, we will welcome you back with open arms. We're excited to have you back. Um, but just know that it, if you were able to then present a clean drug screen, you are under, um, you can be randomly selected for the next year. And it can be during our random selection process. It can just be because we feel like it. you haven't had a, um, drug screen for a little bit, but we can randomly select you um, throughout the next year to make sure that you're remaining clean um, and free of drugs and alcohol in your system. Like I said, a positive drug screen does not necessarily um, mean that you will lose your job, but worst case scenario, it can mean, mean that. And so certainly um, if your drug screen comes back and, and it still is positive, um, we will work with management. Um, we will work with your manager, director, and decide, determined the process that, um, we, that we will follow in order to um, uphold the Madison Health um, drug-free work, workplace policy. Again, we appreciate your cooperation in adhering to our drug screen policy and helping make sure that Madison Health remains a drug-free and alcohol-free workplace. Hi, I'm Jennifer Kennedy, and I work with Madison Health Human Resources as an HR generalist. For this segment, I would like to talk to you about three things. One of them is our internal transfer process when, moving, when wanting to move departments or move positions. The second is our above and beyond recognition program. And the third is our communication here at Madison Health. First of all, internal transfer requests. We hope that you all have found a job that you're going to love here at Madison Health and love being in the departments that you have um, been hired into. Honestly, I can't say that there's a bad department here. I think we have some pretty great departments and some of the best people working here at Madison Health, and I hope you'll enjoy your time here as well. If by chance you choose that you want to transfer, um, we ask that you stay where you are in your department for six months. Now that does not mean during your time you can't work on, like if you're hired as a registered nurse one, you're welcome to move up to a registered nurse two during that time. Um, or if you're hired as an HR generalist one and you work your way up to an HR generalist two, you're welcome. We encourage always um, advancement opportunities, but especially during that six months, you're welcome to advance within your department. We just ask that you stay within your department for six months. The reason for this is, is it's very expensive to get employees hired and trained than only to hear them say, I want to switch departments or I want to go somewhere else um, to work. So um, we ask if you're wanting to work in a different department here at Madison Health, we welcome that. We, um, we encourage that, but we at, just ask that you stay with your department for six months. If your six months is up and you're interested in transferring departments, our internal transfer request can be found online, again, in our policy um, manual. And if you're unable to find it there, please contact a member of HR and we're happy to print off a um, application for you. Now that you've been hired, we ask that you not apply online like you did 
to get your initial job here at Madison Health. You are now an employee. And this um, internal transfer request is a little simpler, um, hopefully not as hard, difficult to fill out as um, applying for a whole new job. But it will ask you what, what your current position is, what positions you're hoping to transfer to, maybe why you're planning on leaving your department or why you're wanting the change. But the very back of that transfer request, um, that back of that transfer request asks for your signature and then it asks for your manager or director's signature. And the reason for this is we just want you to open the lines of communication with your manager or director and let them know that you're interested in switching departments. There may be a reason that you're leaving, such as I need more hours. I want to go from part-time to full-time. They may know of people that are transferring in and out of the department or someone may be leaving, that they may be able to offer you more hours and, and you may not have to move out of the department. Um, but there may be just your dream job is in a different department. And, um, and so we just want you to open the lines of communication with your director or manager as far as your hopes of um, transferring out of the department. Once you get both these signatures, we ask you to bring that application back to, to HR and we will process the application. What we do is we will get it to the hiring manager or director and they will review it. They review it just like any other applicant. Um, they may be interested in interviewing you. You may, be, you may not be someone that they're interested in pursuing um, for, for the position that they're hiring for. So, um, if you're, if, so once you fill out the internal transfer request, we ask you not to pack your bags and say goodbye to your friends in your current department. You're simply being considered for a position. It doesn't mean that you for sure got the position. You'll be considered just like everybody else. So they'll review your application. You may or may not get a job interview. Um, and then you may or may not get the job. Um, you may or may not get the job that you've applied for. We, if you don't get the job that you've applied for, we encourage you to keep looking, keep watching our job board and apply for positions that you're interested in. We, we love to keep our employees here and keep them in jobs that they um, find fulfilling. So the second thing, the second one I would like to talk to you about is our Above and Beyond Recognition Program. This program is patterned after the DAISY Award, which is a national um, recognition program that recognizes the nursing staff. But our Above and Beyond recognizes all um, individuals here at Madison Health. The nomination can be found on our intranet homepage um, under the employee section. On the far right, there's a button that says um, recognition, and so you'll click on that. And then it will ask you a bunch of questions, your name, who you're nominating. And sometimes I hear, I can't nominate so-and-so because I don't even know their name. Um, give as much information as you can, but HR is really good at detective work, and we're happy to try to figure out um, who you're trying to nominate. Um, it will ask what department they're in. If you don't know the department, what they're wearing might be a good ex might give it away. For example, if they're wearing black scrub bottom and red scrub top, you know their department is housekeeping. Again, if you don't know, give as much information as you can. I don't know what department, but it happened in the emergency room last night. So um, give as much information as you can and nominate that individual. Down at the bottom of the nomination, it will ask you questions. Um, did this person acknowledge you? Did this person describe um, describe what was happening? If you think about those questions, they um, follow the ADIT that we're trying to adhere to at Madison Health. And so please mark as many of those as possible. Once you nominate an individual, it comes um, to HR and we make you a little certificate that will pr be presented to your manager or director. On that little certificate is a gold star. We encourage you to wear, wear the gold stars. You're welcome to wear them on your badge. We ask you not to puncture your badge. Um, but you're welcome. There's a couple places on your badge you can put them. You can put them on your lab coats. Some people put them at their desk. Um, and so please put those stars where, where you can be reminded of what a great and valuable employee you are to Madison Health. Every employee that is um, nominated during the month is then put into a big pool where a committee reviews these applications. Again, they try to consider those that follow the Madison values and are aided. it and they choose one winner every month. Um, this is usually a surprise, but we invite um, members of your department, we invite members of your family to come and, and you will be presented with a above and beyond trophy, as well as a, a big certificate saying that you're the monthly above and beyond winner. And your manager director again will read um, the nomination to those attending this meeting. At the very end, there's treats for your department and those that have come. And um, I, 
I've seen these um, nominations come across my desk through the years, and they can be something simple, um, like so-and-so picked up a shift for me. Um, and sometimes I feel like we're saying, thank you for doing a great job. For example, if someone says, so-and-so picked up a shift for me, sometimes I think, well, they should be. They're PRN. They should pick up shifts. But sometimes where I think it goes above and beyond is so-and-so missed a family event to pick up a shift for me, or so-and-so worked five nights in a row and picked up a shift. So it can be something fairly simple, or it can be something grand. Um, we had an employee once um, who was here at the hospital, and a nurse needed to take a blood glucose test and called materials management to find out that the, the batteries for the machine she needed, we didn't have on hand. This employee knew it could be a dire situation, and so he got in his car and drove down to Brolem's, picked up the batteries, and brought them back to the nurse. Certainly he didn't have to do that, but he took it upon himself to go purchase the batteries so that um, the nurse may be able to fulfill her responsibilities and possibly help um, someone here at Madison Health, a, a patient. So, it can be something really simple. It can be something grand. We just encourage you to look around and find ways that people that you work with make your job easier or, ma or make it a better place to come to work. I think after a busy night, it's really easy to come to work and think so-and-so didn't restock the cupboards or so-and-so didn't take out the trash or nobody vacuumed my carpet last night. I think it's really easy to come to work and find the fault and it kind of puts us in a negative mood um, to work. But I think if we come to work and we look at the ways that people are working hard to make the environment here at Madison Health one that our patients want to come to and one that we want to come to as employees, um, it changes our whole mindset. Um, I think we, we begin thinking, wow, we work with some really great people who go way out of their way to make Madison Health a great place to work and for, for us to come. And so we just want to, for you to take a minute to acknowledge them if you can fill out those above and beyond Nominations online, um, it's a great way to, to I think, begin to change um, the, the um, if you take a minute to fill out the above and beyond nomination online, online on our intranet, it's a great way to start to change um, our attitude of coming to work and those that we work with. It helps us find the, the positive instead of the negative. Lastly, the last topic I need to talk to you about is um, our way we communicate here at Madison Health. We have chosen to use um, email as our main mode of communication with our employees. And so we ask that you check your email once per shift. And some of you, that's really easy to do. You have a desk job. Um, my email is open all day, and so I see emails all the time that come across my desk. If you're a housekeeper, if you're working in the kitchen, if you're a nurse, you may not have access to the computer nearly as much as someone who is sitting at a desk, but we still ask that you take just a few minutes, even if you have to come in a few minutes before your shift, that computer lab is usually accessible. Just quickly log in and check, check your emails. Um, that is the way we communicate with all of our employees is through email, and so you will be missing out on some great and also very important announcements if you fail to check your emails, and so we ask all of our employees to please check their emails. Also, a new mode of communication here is text messaging, and so sometimes we will send out a text message. Departments can do this um, just to their departments, or it can go um, out to all employees, but um, we do text um, you, and sometimes you'll be sent to a link for more information because we're only allowed so many characters on those text messages. So it may send you to a link to click on for more emails. Again, we ask you to please look at those text messages when you get them, but our main source of communication right now at Madison Health is our email system. And again, I thank you for choosing Madison Health to be your employer. We're excited to have all of you, and we just hope that you have a great experience here at Madison Health.